Hi scholars, today we're going to look at Teague 4.2c. It says I can compare and order whole numbers through 1 billion and represent the comparisons using the symbols less than, greater than, and equal to. So I will be going um, over place value first and um, uh, representations for it in how we know um, which one is larger and then a strategy. So let's get started. Okay, so let's get started with the first few place values. Now, anything in purple is decimals, and that's a different video. I'm going to focus only on the green place values. The very first place value is called the ones place. There is like an invisible zero uh, decimal right over here. So like anytime you see a whole number like four, you can also assume there is a decimal right there. You just don't see it. Usually the decimal is only used if you have something in that place value and so on and so forth. But, you know, whole numbers are usually written without the decimal. So to represent the ones place, you have, we have one of these, or sometimes it's like a little cube. And so this represents ones. And this section here is how I draw them in my journal or like sometimes like when I'm teaching in my classroom. This is how I draw it because it's faster. And this is what I tell my students to draw in their journal. So like if I give them a number, I have them use these as representations. But like this is something maybe you'll see like on an assignment. It'll be more detailed so you can understand what's exactly going on. So um, in journals and on the board, you know, if I'm teaching, I'll draw an X, which represents ones, but like on an assignment or in a test or whatever, you might see a little square or a little cube. So just be aware about that. The next place value is the tens place. Okay, the tens in a journal, usually I just tell my students to draw a line and then uh, um, on assignments and things like that. you're going to see like a long stick with 10 pieces in there. The reason why is because if this is the ones place, as soon as I reach 10, I'm in a double digit. And so if I have 10 of these, they make up one of these. So this is one tens block or 10 ones. So if I have nine ones, and I have one more one I'm adding to it. Well, now I have 10. Well, not 10 of these change into one of these. So then I have zero ones and I have one tens block. Okay, next is the hundreds place. The hundreds, uh, the hundreds block in journals, I just tell my students draw a square um, and then, like, you know, a detailed version of it would be this. Because once you have a hundred, it's like you have a hundred of these. And a hundred of these fit in one of these. And ten of these fit in here. So a hundreds block is having one hundred of these or 10 of these, or 100, 100 block. And then last but not least is the thousands place. It is basically, you have either 1,000 of these. Now remember I told you that um, sometimes your teacher might have like a cube so um, mine's flat, but you know if you have cubes, you'd have a thousand cubes, little cubes. That's why I have that over there. Or you're gonna have one hundred of these, or ten of these. Okay. Notice that I said you're either gonna if you're gonna make one of these, it's a thousand of these, or a hundred of these, or ten of these. The reason why is because if I have one ones block and I multiply it by a thousand times, I have one thousand. 
and that's a thousands block. So I have to have a thousand of these little things here. But if I have one tens, if I have ten tens blocks, I'm sorry, if I have a tens block and I have a hundred of them, that also equals a thousand. So I have to have ten of these in order to equal this. Or if I have a hundreds block, I have to have 10 of those to equal 1,000. So this is what a thousands block looks like. It's like, a, it's basically a 1,000 of these cubes. And I, I like to think of like one layer as 100. So 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, 1,000. But then you can also think about these. There's a hundred of these sticks in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten times ten is a hundred. So imagine ten of these 3D sticks in here. Or you have one hundred, one thousand of these fitting in here. Okay, so we're going to compare two numbers. We're going to compare 1,236 to 1,237. So... In these first few examples, I'm going to use manipulative so you can understand what's going on, and then we'll um, talk about strategies. So 1,236, it's like having one thousands block right here, two hundreds blocks right here, three tens blocks right here, and then six ones blocks. One, two, three, four five, six. So I'm going to put that right there. So looking at this one now, it's pretty close. I have one thousands block. So right here, I have two hundreds blocks right here. I have three tens blocks right here. One, two, three. And then I have seven ones blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so I'm going to just put them right there. So looking at both of these, it's pretty close. This one has one more ones block. Everything else is the same. When you compare numbers, it's always a good idea to just put them on top of each other and start with the very left. So you always want to look at this place value first, the farthest place value, because if you look at this, it won't tell you anything because you could have five thousands blocks and one thousands blocks. But if you have like, you know, nothing here and seven of them here, it's going to look like this is a larger number. I'll explain that more as I go on. But let's just talk about the strategy. Tra tra strategy. <laughs> so I, if I have one thousands block here and one thousands block here, that means they have exactly the same. If I have two hundreds block here, two hundreds block here, exactly the same. Three hundreds block here, three hundreds block, three tens block here, three tens block here, exactly the same. Seven here, but six here. That means there is one more of these in this than this. So therefore, this becomes the higher number. So to explain that, using a symbol, I would use the greater than symbol like this. This is the greater than symbol, the more open spot, the more open space side points to the one that has more. Okay, so let's look at another example because I um, was talking about it in uh, the last clip and um, I don't think it was making very much sense, so I'm going to explain it using manipulatives. So let's represent this number, 231. So 200s three tens, and one ones block, right here, okay? So that's 231. Now let's look at this one, 2,231. So here is two thousands blocks, two hundreds blocks, three tens blocks, 
and then one ones block. So that's 2,231. So as I was getting at the manipulatives, you could tell that this one is a larger number because it had those 2,000s blocks. So to represent that, well, first, the problem-solving strategy would be to write both numbers on top of each other where the place value matches, okay? If you do this, that's incorrect. I'm sorry, I didn't even realize you couldn't see it. When you write this, make sure you write them right on top of each other in the matching place value. This is incorrect because if you notice, that's two hundreds. This is the thousands place, so I can't move that over there. When you're listing it, you need to put the hundreds on top of the hundreds, the thousands on top of the thousands, and so on and so forth. So from looking at this, you know, it's like I have zero thousands place, zero in the thousands place. So obviously this one is larger, so to write it, this one is larger. So it's very important you look at the highest place value first. Do not start over here. Let me explain why. Let's look at this one. This one has two thousands blocks right here, like this. Two hundreds blocks right here. Three tens blocks right here. And then one ones block. Okay, so that's 2,231. Let's look at this one. Two hundreds blocks, three tens blocks, and nine ones blocks. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's 239. Okay, we can tell that this one is a larger number because it has the thousands block. However, if you use the wrong strategy, you'll end up getting the wrong answer. If you start from here and you're like, oh, this has a 9, this only has a 1, this is the larger number, clearly you can tell from the place value blocks the 2,000 something is larger than the 200 something. This is lacking thousands blocks. I mean, even if this one had 1, then, you know, it, it still, this has more of, a, of place value blocks than the other. So when you're solving, same thing. You want to write them right on top of each other, matching up. And you can tell, okay, zero thousands blocks, that has two, that's, that has two of thousands blocks. This is the larger number, just like that. Okay. But let's say you had this. You're like, okay, start over here. This has two of them, that, that has one of them. This is still larger. Let's say you had this. Okay, I'm just going to draw a box here so you can see what I'm talking about. So in this situation, you have two thousands, two thousands, Two hundreds, two hundreds, three tens, three tens. This one only has one one. This only has nine ones. So in that situation, you do have to look at the ones place. But that's after you started from here and worked your way down. But please do not start from here and just make that call, like make that final call. Um, the only time you would look at the ones place is if you want to determine if the number is odd or even or sometimes use it as a divisibility rule, like if it has a 5 or a 0, then you know it's divided by 5, it can be divided by 5s or 10s or things like that. Um, but you, when you're comparing numbers, you have to start from the farthest placed value.